great to see you. My name's Phil. It's, uh, it's good to have you here this morning. I'm on the, the staff team here at Freedom Church. If you, um, if you weren't here last week, then what you need to know is that this is week two of us taking the opportunity to dive deeper into uh, some of the big changes that are happening this year. Um, and it's, it's an, an exciting time. Uh, if you're here for the first time, then uh, I'm, I'm joined here on stage by Andrew and Tim. And last week, um, I interviewed them, and we chatted about leadership transition, and the fact that next week, uh, we're calling Transition Sunday, and we're going to be honoring John Stuart Jones for the, for the years that he's poured into to building church here in the role of senior pastor. Um, and, then, and then Andrew and Tim will be commissioned um, into that position of senior pastor and taking on the role of uh, visionary leaders of Freedom Church. And that's really what we, where we want to start today is, is talking about uh, vision. Like We'd like to hear from you guys, uh, like what your vision is for the year ahead. We'd like you to envision us uh, so that we can be excited about what's coming up and what, what God's doing with us this year. Um, now, if, uh, if you were here last week, you may notice that I've added a feature uh, this week uh, that I like to call the hotspot. <laughs> so... Um, in a, in a couple of minutes, obviously, I'll be, I'll be inviting each of you to, to come up and, and speak to us on the hot spot. <laughs> they are ready. Their fingers are ready. <laughs> um, I've called it the hot spot. <laughs> that won't grow tiring at all, will it? Um, <laughs> so... Guys, one of the things that came out of our, um, our interview last week was um, how you each bring something different to the senior pastor role, um, and that actually those, those different strengths that you have complement each other uh, when it comes to the mission of Freedom Church, which is to know Christ and make him known, which is a mission statement that I know that you both, you both value wholly, uh, but there's, there's a sense in which, uh, Tim, your strengths play well. To the, to the knowing Christ part of, of our mission. And Andrew, you've got a different set of skills uh, that are well suited to the making him known parts. So, um, so if it's okay with you both, without wishing to pigeonhole you, um, I, I'd like to uh, chat to each of you about your vision for Freedom Church in those terms. Uh, Tim, so, um, so knowing Christ. For those who may be new to faith or perhaps from a more traditional church background, uh, knowing Christ might feel like an academic exercise, like knowing the Queen. Like, what has what has knowing Christ meant for you? Okay, um, <clears throat> it is a profound mystery that we as individuals can know the living God, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we were called to hope this morning by by Ian, and and the hope is that in a relationship with Jesus, we can know his way and will for us. Um, and I, personally, okay, my, my experience of knowing God, of having a relationship with Jesus, we've got to start with a seasonal analogy because they're so much more anointed. Um, it, it, it is seasonal. It's like there are times where it feels like everything's in bloom and there's flowers everywhere and it's all la, 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 la. And there's other times where it feels like winter and the branches are stripped bare, um, and um, it's something that uh, is, is seasonal. Uh, and there's times in my life where I've, I've made a decision to pursue God, and there's times in my life where I have tried to retreat from God. Can anyone relate to that? Mm. And, um, you know, I want to enc encourage us that actually in this relationship, the times where I've chosen to dig deep, and pursue God have been the times of greatest connection, the times of greatest peace, the times of growth, and actually peace sometimes where everything around is, is, like, is like raging seas. But when I'm pursuing God and hearing his voice and knowing that relationship with him, it's like I have a firm foundation even in the storms. That's amazing. <laughs> that... That, that sense of, um, that, of ebbing and flowing speaks to me of, of rhythm. Yeah. Um, 
when I, when I joined uh, Freedom as the worship pastor in 2014, um, you were one of our main drummers. In fact, you may have been the only drummer at the time, <laughs> I, uh, I think. Yes, and, that did um, and, and what, what people may not realize about, about music um, is the importance of, of the drummer, because the drummer lays down uh, the rhythm that everyone else locks into, right? Mm. Um, and if you, if you take away that sense of rhythm, um, then there can be a, an incohesion in the music. But as soon as people lock into that, that rhythm, um, then, then the whole band starts to, to move with a, a cohesion uh, and a unity. Um, and, and, I, and I mention that because as you've been praying and seeking God for this year ahead, I know that the, the idea of rhythm has been very much on your heart, right? Yeah, yeah those, those times of pursuing God are, are, for me, they're rhythmic. They're like a heartbeat. They are times where I, I fall into a different pattern. It's not just the pattern dictated to me by my own mind, but it's in relationship with him, moving with God, listening to him, hearing him. It's like a, it's like a, a foundational uh, rhythm. And, and that's really what I feel God's doing with us as a church this year, that he's establishing his heartbeat in Freedom Church again. Yeah. That heartbeat, that rhythm. My, my heart is that everyone in this place knows the rhythm of God in their lives, that they are able to connect with him, hear his voice, uh, and move forward into that relationship. You know, Jesus' life was, was punctuated by rhythm. It's, if you read through the Gospels, you'll see it says, and Jesus retreated up a mountain to pray, and Jesus withdrew from the crowds to pray, uh, and Jesus went to the garden to pray uh, and wrestle with God. And Jesus himself says in John 5, um, I can do nothing without seeing the Father. I, I do only what I see the Father doing. Even the Son of God didn't dictate his own rhythm. He was in this heartbeat of God for his life. And that's what I think this year is about for us as a church. Spiritually, we want to move into a place where we're in sync with the heartbeat of God and breathing together as a church. That's a, that's a really cool picture of the church moving in sync together as one. Um, it's a little bit intangible, a little bit in ethereal, and I wonder if you can put some meat on the bone for us for that. Um, and, and to do that, I'm going to ask you to answer two questions for us. One is... Fast forward to December 2020, um, at the end of this year, what, what do you see as the potential for us as individuals, as members of Freedom Church, um, uh, in a year's time? And can you tell us about the journey that we're going on in order to get there? Um, so to answer those questions, you know what's about to happen, don't you? Tim, I'm going to ask you to take your place on the hot spot. <laughs> Is this, um, I don't want to lose it in the slipping around on the hot spot, but the fact is, I believe God is calling us to this heartbeat, to hear his heartbeat, to actually just pause for a moment and hear what God is establishing in your own life and in the life of this church. John spoke about vision on, on week one, and he was saying, what is your vision and what is your vision for Freedom Church? Our lives in God are, are not about a tick box of things that we do to get better in God's sight. Would you agree with that? It's not a, it's not a system of courses. It's not a certification. It's not an action to make God love you more. It is all about a relationship. If I told you that um, I've been married almost 22 years and Mary and I never talk, I never listen to her and we never spend time together, you would think there's something fundamentally wrong or that 22 years is a miracle. Yeah. Equally, if I said the, the basis of our marriage is that we plan an hour and a half a week where we get together, but Mary doesn't say anything and I just sing at her, and then I listen to someone else talk about how great she is, you would also think there's something wrong 
with that marriage. And, uh, and, and I want to convey that this is all about a relationship with the living God. And, and prayer signifies that relationship. Prayer is the everything of that relationship. We think about prayer as a, please God help me, which it can be. But prayer is, is air. Prayer is oxygen to our relationship with God. It's our worship. It's our reading of the word. It's our hearing from him. It's our speaking to him. It's our feeling the heartbeat of God and knowing the heartbeat of God in our relationship with him. And I think the first thing that we are going to be doing this year um, is through February and March, we're going to be running a course by a guy called Pete Gregg. Um, and we're going to be speaking over 10 weeks about prayer, about our relationship with God. How do we build that? How do we start? This, this book by Pete Gregg uh, is called How to Pray. Um, and what I've loved about it in the months that I've been reading it and studying it is that he takes you on a, on a very personal journey to demystify prayer and make it a normal part of your day, but then he takes you from there into a place where your prayer is powerful outside of yourself. So you're building a foundation, and then you're praying, and you're investing in, in the community of the church. You're praying and seeing things happen. And uh, we, we're looking to spend some time doing that together uh, as a church. I, my hope for you in this, and my hope as we spend time studying this, uh, is that you will get better at hearing the voice of God. Just simply better at hearing and knowing the voice of God. That you'll be more experienced in his presence and have more opportunity to process some of your own disappointments in prayer. Even the realness of some of the disappointments in prayer. And I also think maybe there's an opportunity for us to experience more miracles. One of the things it's done for me is just to open my eyes to ask for everything. You get what you ask for. And to pray into everything. And to grab hold of God for everything. So that's the prayer course. Um, I want to encourage you, at the end of that time, we're going to be doing a 24-7 week of prayer down at, down at Freedom Center. And we're creating a, a space in there that's going to be like a heart center in that building where we're going to pray together and see territory gained, love the women's inspire title, uncharted territory. For us as a church, this is a time of moving into uncharted territory. Um, I want to encourage you, by the way, that slide's going to come up again. Get one of these books. We've got a few out there. Go on Kindle and get it. Go on Audible and get it. Get to the website, uh, prayercourse.org, and, um, and make a decision to join a life group. Because in our life groups, we're going to be working through uh, an eight-week course as part of what we do as life groups. So that's the first thing. And my, my heart within that course, our heart within that course, is that people hear and know the heartbeat of God in their lives. And that we as a church know the heartbeat of God for our church. What is it that God is calling us to? He is the head. He is the beginning and the end. So what does that look like for this year? Um, there's one of the things in the prayer course, uh, in, the, in, the, in the book, How to Pray, which I have found really useful for my time uh, with God. And it's an acronym, which I don't normally go for. But it's an acronym around the word pray. And it's, it, what it is, it's like a rhythmic um, approach to prayer. It's, it's four kind of steps that you go through in a time that you've carved out to be with God. Pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. Okay, they're the, the four areas. And I found as I've explored this on my own, it's been something that's been really fruitful for me uh, to, to listen to God, to, to spend time thanking him. Uh, to plead with him for everything and anything, and then to yield to his will. It's a, a pattern that he establishes uh, in the Lord's Prayer. And, uh, and so we're going to be exploring that together. But I, 
I've seen this, this year in that sense of rhythm. So over this year, we're going to start with this prayer course. That is an opportunity for us to pause. It's an opportunity for you to stop and just seek God for his rhythm, for his heartbeat in your own life. If you engage with this, I thoroughly believe that God will give you a new rhythm for your relationship with him. Will give you breath to breathe. Even in the most tumultuous of circumstances, the peace that you can know is off the planet. Second, we're going to, in May and June, we're going to rejoice as we teach through the book of Thessalonians. Mm. And we're going to rejoice with the apostle as he rejoices about the birth of a new church. We're going to study through that and reflect on some of the stuff, um, the lessons that Paul uh, is sharing there with the church. Then we're going to move on in September and we're going to ask. We're going to be in a season where we talk about our opportunity for community. We, well, Andrew will speak more about Freedom Center in a moment. But we're going to be seeking God for his rhythm in the things that we do in our community. What's the pattern that you're establishing, God? And then what can we pray into and claim territory for? And then we're going to, at the back end of the year in, in November, we're going to study Romans 12, 1 to 3, and we're going to talk about yielding to God. And that will all be punctuated at the end uh, by next Christmas. We're going to launch into a time of celebration uh, where we just study worship, and it's going to be called Let Us Adore as we lift up Jesus' name uh, next Christmas. So that's the pattern for the year. Those are the things that we're doing. We want you to find that rhythm and that heartbeat by the end of this year that actually each person knows the heartbeat of God for their life and that we are firmly established in the heartbeat of God for this church. I would like to take us back to last summer where um, a friend of our church, Mark Isles, sent us a letter containing a, a prophecy he felt God speak for us, uh, to him specifically for Freedom Church. Now, to some, the idea of a, of a prophecy sounds like something from a fantasy film. Like, we're living in 2020. Is there, is there a place for prophecy today? Uh, can you demystify that for us? Yes, there is, and no, I can't. Um, Thank you. A prophecy just means someone saying something uh, about the future. In a Christian context, it's framed by this, that it's, it's a word from God of encouragement to the church. Okay, it is something often that is confirmatory. We talked about that. It's something that we, we know in part. So when someone speaks a prophecy, when someone says, I feel like God is saying this, it is something that we can um, know is not scripture. Okay, it's not inscripturated. Someone can't stand up and go, this is the word of God to you. You must do it. That's not what it is. And we also know that prophecy is entirely weighed against scripture. So no, I can't demystify it, but it is a beautiful thing in the church and something that we should earnestly seek. Now, the prophecy that Mark sent through was significant for us, <laughs> um, particularly for, for you guys at a leadership level at that time, uh, where you were already discussing some of the stuff that's coming up for this year, and it served in that confirmatory uh, way, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what were some of the things in that prophecy that that resonated, Tim, with you uh, for the things that you've just shared with us? Well, um, there's a section here from, from Mark R's prophetic word, which I thought was really significant. And by the way, I only picked this up again about three weeks ago and started to pray over it and pray through it. Uh, but it says this, I think also at this time, protection for the church is quite important in prayer. As you're beginning to move into areas where you've not been before, and the enemy is inevitably going to try and protect the ground that he's gained in the past. It isn't anything we should be fearful of, but he's not going to hand it over without us claiming our rights and claiming our inheritance in the Lord Jesus. I, I was moved when I reread that um, in the context of planning the prayer course of, of wanting to see the church shift into the the heartbeat of God for, for us. The second thing was this. The last thing I want to bring to this prophetic word is to say the Father is calling people in church. God is calling individuals in the church to grow and to be stretched. And that is going to help them move into their calling. 
that was a section from, from the prophecy which, which I'm really encouraged about. And if you buy into that, if you commit to grow, you will grow profoundly this year. Awesome. Andrew, we've not heard from you yet. Are there one or two things from the prophecy that specifically resonated with you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, just firstly to say, I'm making sure that I'm sitting upright this week because I felt, looking back at the video, it looked like I was doing this last week. And to, 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 to be fair, I was. And that had nothing to do with Tim. I was just, I'm, I had a cold, real bad cold for about a month and I'm struggling to hear. So I was very much le- listening to what uh, Phil was having to say. But um, regarding the prophecy, absolutely. I think, uh, as has already been said, it came very much as, a, as, as confirmation. And, and, and that is hugely encouraging, I think, for us as a leadership and I think also for us as a church. And I think the chronology around that was really important because Mark had mentioned to John back in May last year that he felt God was giving him a word for us but it wasn't formed yet and he would bring it to us later. In June, I spent some time chatting with Tim and John about things that were really on my heart for the future of us as a church, which involved the move from here down to the center. And then in June and July, Mark brought us that word in written form and also an audible form. And uh, it was amazing in terms of bringing real confirmation. And, and also, I say, the chronology of that was a, God was speaking to someone independently for a, around a lot of the changes which God was speaking over us as a church. Um, we were discussing that, feeling that was the heart for us, knowing that these was quite some, some bold moves for us to make. And then the two coming together subsequently was a real confirmation. And I think that's not only encouraging for us. I, I hope that... Us as a church feel that as being really encouraging that God is in this and, and, and in the steps that we've got ahead of us. Yeah. But specifically, a couple of things that came from that, when I want to read them because um, it's important just to try and get that correctly. He, t- he spoke about that change is here, that it, it's, being, it's like looking at um, a game of two halves, that the second half is very, very different from the first half. And I think this whole new season that we're going to be coming into, the move from here down to Freedom Center is a massive, is a massive change for us. And it's going to be like the second half of the game looking very different um, to the first. And that the pace of change is going to be rapid and there's going to be significant change and that the time is now. And all of that's like, whoa, can put us into a bit of a tailspin. And we can feel like that. But I think, again, coming back to the fact we're knowing that God is in this journey, you know, with, with, with all the other promises that God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us and so forth, it's important to hold on to that. The second was that he says there is a need for the creation of a new community with a different lifestyle, a much more evangelistic feel to it. Now, we know, in a sense, that's straight out of Scripture in terms of who we are called to be as a community, the way in which we're called to love our neighbor, to love our community. And when we hear this word as confirmation to that, it's already in our heart. And talking about the, the, as it were, the game of two halves, I'm just super excited for when we, when we um, move down to the center and, in a sense, step into this new opportunity. Let's talk more about that move then. So Tim, Tim spoke to us about personal growth, um, the mission of the church to know Christ and make him known. Let's talk about making him known. What's our motivation for moving down the center? Have we outgrown the school here? Have we outgrown Holier? Definitely not. But it's much more about, I think, it's, it's the, that the time is right now. Let's be honest. We bought the building seven years ago. It's been a project. It's now about stepping into the, the new season which we believe God is leading us into in the creation of home. And this, this will become, and it, it's the opportunity for us as, as church, as it were, to adopt this facility which is ours and to see what God is going to do in the very midst of us in this new location. That's awesome. Um, you've, you've mentioned before about some changes, some further changes that need to happen to the building before we can move our morning services down there. But then last week you mentioned an interim step um, uh, that we're putting in place really shortly. Yeah, so 
um, from the second week in February, we're going to be starting to meet of an evening down at Freedom Center. As was said before, today is, is the last morning service down at Freedom Center, but from the second week in February, we will, beginning, we will be beginning a, an evening service. And it's not just a change in time, there's going to be a, a different focus. What it also enables is many of the people who serve in kids' work and in, in other areas within the church will have an opportunity to then come to an evening service whereby in the morning they've been serving. And so these are opportunities, be more opportunities to serve again within in prayer ministry and other areas within, within church life. But it's also a stepping stone for us on, on the road to where we, when we fully transition as a whole church down there later in the year. And for you, it's very much not just about Sundays, is it? Like in, in December, we opened up the, the, the center every Saturday, uh, and we had hundreds of people come through the doors for the, for the great giveaway that we put on. You must have been encouraged by that response. Super, super encouraged. I mean, I, 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 I was out on the, on the street each week um, trying to be the connect point from people walking up and down to getting to them to the door. And you know what? It reminded me when I kept popping my head inside the door every, every now and again um, that people are desperate for love. And that it, it, can, it, it, looks, it looks like a different thing to a lot of different people. For many, I mean, there were some people who came, no joke, at, at half ten and stayed there the whole day and just w were just loving the opportunity, the environment, being in that place, feeling loved because of the various opportunities that the church had to love them, whether it was just watching a film, whether it was tea, coffee, whether it was lunch, where it was having their nails done, a conversation, multiple touch points. And people were just like, wow. And then when people came to me and said, uh, and I'd say, hi, have you heard about it? Yeah, we've heard about it. Our friends told us and we're coming. I just thought, Awesome. So super excited as to that connection and that opportunity to engage with community. Amazing. Well, I'm, I'm keen to pose the same questions to you that I posed to Tim in the context of making Christ known. Um, can, you, can you tell us where you see us in a year's time and what the journey looks like for us uh, this year in order to get to that point and to do that? I promise this is the last time I'm going to invite you to take to the hot spot. We have... The, what can we see? We've spoken so many times in the last couple of years. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you dream about the kind of church that God would call us to be and the way we would connect with community? Well... For me, this begin, what we have seen during December in, in connection and loving on a community, for me, this is what I'm seeing a year from now, where it's not just an event that we put on and that there's no distinction between doing this for the community, that actually we create a community in the heart of the community where people are just attracted to, are drawn to. And I'm not painting pie in the sky. I believe as we commit to this, as we, as we are willingly invested in it, that we will see a fundamental shift in our community a place where people really want to come to. Just as I said, some of those conversations out on the street uh, during December, where people said, yeah, our friends told us they came last week, so we thought we'd come and have a look. I mean, that's just, you may not think that that's particularly significant, but I think it's massive. And people staying there, not just coming in for five minutes, although some did, but they came and enjoyed a cup of tea and went, but some stayed the whole day. There was something about the oasis, about the atmosphere that was created. And of course, we know fundamentally that God is in that, is right at the, at the heart of that. And we want to continue loving and enveloping community. What about that we develop a place? Why can't it be that a year from now, I'm not just imagining, but I am believing for and that we will see a community where people, the broken those who are truly hurting come and they just are able to breathe. 
They're not yet fixed up necessarily. They haven't got all the answers. They haven't got it all together. But that they are there in the midst of a community who wraps their arms around them. Maybe they were working the streets the night before. And we have that in Jersey. Maybe they're struggling to bring up their kids. They're a single parent or whatever. And yet within this community, they find a place where their kids are loved. Even though they're noisy and out of control, their kids are loved and they feel loved. And through it all, they are experiencing the tangible love of Jesus. Community communicated in a way that they understand. So we're not just going to imagine it or dream it. I believe we're going to experience it. Two things that came out, or one thing majorly from, from the prophecy, and I want, to, I want to, to read it so that we understand, because it's right at the heart of who we are. One of the things that Mark says was this. One of the images that came to me early on as I was preparing this prophetic word was a sense that the ship, the Freedom Church ship, has been in the harbor, and there has been a restocking and a restoring and a preparation with new sails and a sense that the ship has been equipped for a long and significant journey. I've seen the crew being trained, people bringing on stores and supplies. But we're at that moment in the ship's life where the captain decides it's time to leave harbour and set sail. Having investigated on the internet, I know he raises a flag which says, all hands on board. He raises the Blue Peter flag, and I believe this flag is being raised over Freedom Church because God is saying, it is time to move on. The preparation is turning into a time of participation. It's like saying, It's time to say, I'm in. Because if the ship leaves and you ain't on the ship, you've missed the boat. (laughs) Okay? And so we, we believe this is a significant time in the life of church. It's an opportunity to say, I'm in. I'm I'm there. I'm paid up. I am on board for what is coming. Now I know I know back in September when I preached. I kind of, and people were excited about the new move, and I said, it's going to be costly, but are we in? And people rose and, and clapped and said, we're in. But you know, it is costly, isn't it? Anybody know that sometimes serving a vision is costly? But I want to encourage us not to allow that to detract from what God is going to be doing right in the midst of us. Years ago, when we, when we started church, um, we planted out at, at um, Wolf's Caves, and um, it was great. We were passionate about starting church with just, just a handful of individuals, many of whom are still in the room here this morning. And it was, it was a small group, and we went out to Wolf's Caves. But what, what we, what, as part of that process of taking that step, of doing something new, of moving to a brand new location and starting church, in a sense, all over again, it was a costly exercise, I can tell you. It was costly financial, financially, it was costly with time, because we had to turn up and serve, we had to give, and so forth. But the amazing thing is, look around the room here, and obviously in later years when we amalgamated, God was doing something. So I don't want us to allow the cost of what's going to be happening in this next year to put us up from what God is doing in the midst of us. Because all of us love the idea of seeing a church where people are truly being impacted, where lives are being changed, where the hurts are being met in Jesus And I want to encourage us as we look at that, we focus on that, that not to allow the cost and the time and the investment to take away from believing and holding on to what God is going to do with us. Well, sorry, I went over a little bit, but I think that's okay. Tim, should we pray? Because I think it's important that we pray. Father, we we know that you are head of this church. (coughs) We submit to you, we yield to you now, Jesus. We ask 
uh, Lord, that you would establish your heartbeat for Freedom Church. It would be something that we um, hear as individuals that we fall into line with. Lord, you're the one that establishes the rhythm. We simply play along to the beat. Father, we pray for every heart in this room who, uh, who feels a disconnection from any sense of purpose. Lord, we pray that they would hear your heartbeat. We pray for any person who feels isolated, that they would pray for, we, we, we would pray for now, connection with your heartbeat. Lord God, for any person who feels lost, that you would find them with your heartbeat for their life, Lord God. And as that heart beats and we breathe together as a church, you would increase blood flow and activity and strength and restoration and healing and all the things that you've promised your church will be as you establish your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Father, thank you for the journey you have us on. Lord, as we, as we, as we continue to be envisioned, Lord, we want to take a step forward into it. Lord, I pray that today and the days ahead, you would continually encourage us to say, I'm in this. I'm with you. I will be with you. I'm going before you. I want to see those dreams that you've dreamt. I want to see those people you have, who you have seen where people are healed, families restored, miraculous healings. I want to see those things come to pass. So Lord, help us. Give us the, the desire. Increase in us that, uh, that willingness to step into that relationship with you. Jesus' name.